around $2 billion in the prior year. So as Bill had mentioned in his results, a significant amount of construction work and capital spending that's underway within TVA this year. And then lastly, in terms of our financing activity, we've done significantly less financing, uh, as you expect, based off of the uh, favorable results. So in summary, you've seen higher revenues this year. We've seen lower fuel costs, which we're happy. The performance of our fleet, the diversity of our fleet, and our ability to take advantage of low-cost fuel has resulted in lower overall fuel costs to our customers. Lower uh, expenses results in higher net income and less debt. So I'll pause there and see if there's any questions about the results in the first nine months. If not, I'll move uh, directly into the budget presentation. All right, so as Bill highlighted when he went through the President's report, the focus on the mission and strategic imperatives is the key element that we use for aligning our business plans and the organization around the priorities that you have set for us as management. And so this is a critical anchor when we begin our business planning process. Next slide, please. And so when we look at our annual budget that I'm presenting for you today, we always keep that in the context of how are we, how are we progressing towards the long-term objectives of the board to set for management. And so this chart reflects the 2014 10-year long-range plan that the board had outlined relative to what would happen with TVA's overall debt structure and TVA's overall rate structure. Again, these are long-term planning directions and not meant to be a specific annual event. We come and present the budget on a yearly basis. But this plan had TBA reduced in its overall debt to $21.8 billion, as you can see, over the 10-year period. And some portion of that would have been driven through uh, some modest rate increases on an annual basis that would average out to be about 1.5%. I wouldn't want anybody to misinterpret this meaning that TVA is planning to do 1.5% every year for the next 10 years, but you look at these on an average basis when you look across the plan here. And so the plan that I'm presenting to you today, I would tell you, reflects results that exceed the expectations that you had for us in that 10-year plan. And you could look at that two different ways. If we were to keep the same uh, rate assumptions in the original plan and say, well, how would our debt look if all of these results flowed through debt? You would see a $1.8 billion savings from the original plan, or we would be at roughly $20 billion at the end of this year. Conversely, if you were to say, maintain the same debt trajectory, what would the savings look like if they flowed through the rate scenario? And you would see roughly a 0.7% compounded annual growth rate versus the 1.5%. And so I come to you to talk about a plan today with the giving you the context that this exceeds what your expectations for us over the 10-year period. Regardless of what the 10-year period looks like, and I think Bill mentioned this as well in his uh, President's report, is there, there is the need for short-term rate increases predominantly to pay for the principal and interest for the new plants that will be coming online over the next several years. We talked quite a bit about Watts Bar 2, our progress there, and we anticipate 2016, sometime in the winter, that that unit will come online. When it comes online, we will begin servicing the debt. So we'll begin paying principal and interest. You can see the impact of, the fact of that represented in the $450 million. We will also begin receiving the benefits of the fuel, the low-cost fuel going through that. And I'll talk more about the impacts on fuel a little bit later. But this just gives you some idea of why, in the short term, there are some modest rate increases that are needed to fund our overall plan. When we put the long-range plan together, uh, one of your directives was that we ensure that if we had modest rate increases, that our overall competitiveness of our rates was maintained. So every year we review that with you to make sure that you see how we're doing from a rate competitiveness perspective. And we really look at that in two different areas. One is what the average retail rate looks like that you can see on the left side of this chart. And we look at the average retail rate in really two perspectives. One is regionally what's happening. And the second is, what do we look like on a national basis? And so as you can see from this chart, we're about right in the middle in terms of the southeast, in terms of our rate, at 9.03 cents. Uh, now you can also tell that there's a very tight band because we happen to live in an area where rates are very low in the southeast, and so you see a narrow band there. When we look at what top quartile is in the region, meaning the lowest 25% of the rates, 
uh, the top quartile increased year over year by 3.2%, while TVA's rates only increased by 0.7%. So we're actually becoming more competitive relative to top quartile. And you remember we talked about last year doing a 1.5% effective retail rate increase. And you say, well, but you just told me your rates only went up by 0.7%. And that's because we were able to take advantage of the diverse fleet we have and the improved operational performance and offset over half of that rate increase to global fuel costs. If you look nationally, you can see that we're kind of in the below, well below average, kind of in the middle of the second quartile. We also obviously look at industrial rates that you can see on the right side of this page. Understanding our mission to provide for economic development, uh, industrial rates is a very competitive area. What you can see is that TVA is well positioned in our ability to have an offer uh, low industrial rates to be able to attract, in, attract industry to the valley. So I'll tell you in summary here that we put together a plan that exceeds the original expectations of rates and debt and the overall rates then maintain their 2016 budget itself, beginning with some of the key planning assumptions that you can see listed. Uh, I won't read through all of them, but that uh, overall our trajectory for low growth is still at about a 1% over the long term. I'll talk more in detail about the short term in just a minute. Uh, this does include uh, a pension contribution of $275 million, our annual increase in the projected benefit cost is somewhere in the $100 million range, so you can see that we are continuing to make a commitment to reduce the overall uh, underfunded status of the pension, and that's included in this plan as well. Uh, so moving first into TVA's cost structure that's presented in this plan, I'll begin with the right side of the equation, so the capital that would uh, typically be debt funded is new capacity expansion for the environmental work that we're doing to, to retrofit like the Gallatin facility. And you can see this plan includes $1.9 billion of capacity expansion and environmental spending. And I'll go through the details of that in a few slides. And then looking at the left side, and everything else has to get through rates. Beginning with the largest single item in our budget, which is our fuel and purchase power at $3.4 billion. Moving up to our O&M at 2.9 billion. Again, this has the realization of the $500 million reduction. Uh, debt service, so paying the principal and interest on these plants when they go into service is obviously critical to our achieving our debt reduction plans. And you can see roughly $1.4 billion of debt reduction included in this plan and the interest on that debt at $1.4 billion. Next slide, please. Okay. So now I'll begin with what our overall load growth projections look like in terms of what our peak demands look like, so that's the, the assets and the energy efficiency that we need to meet the overall peak. You can see we're projecting about a 1% growth. In, in this case, I'm showing you 2016, 17, and 18, and looking at that planning horizon. And then you can see on the energy side, slightly higher at 1.5%. We still believe over the long term that we'll be at about a 1% overall growth rate. But in the short term, because of some of the success we've had in the economic development areas, that's actually slightly higher see on this chart. When we look at the overall shape and growth of the load, we obviously begin with what the, the gross level of load looks like, and you can see that with the brown line at the top of this chart. And then we model what the impacts of energy efficiency that are occurring, what we call naturally occurring, are those items that are not directly influenced by TPA, and that reduces our overall load projection from 1.9 to 1.5%. Potential growth at about 0.3%, large commercial and industrial at 0.4%, small commercial and industrial at 03 and the direct service growth at 05 Those are discrete customers that we're aware of, and that's how we get to the overall 1.5% load growth. Obviously, this load growth and sales assumptions result directly into our revenue forecast. This chart shows you the history and what our projections are for 2016. Uh, I'll take just a moment to explain the labeling at the bottom of the chart because this will be repetitive throughout my presentation. Where there's a FY, I'll start at the left side, FY, that's fiscal year 11A, that stands for actual results. Anytime you see an A, I'm referring to actual results historically. When you see an F, that's our forecast for the current year. So you can see the fiscal year 15 forecasted revenue. And then anywhere there's a P, that represents a plan. 
you will later on in the presentation see me reference a B, which is a budget. When you approve our plan, it officially becomes a budget. And so I haven't been presumptuous about changing 16 to a B yet. Hopefully at the end of the presentation I can. Moving on to uh, our fuel and purchase power trends. So I'll take just a minute to describe this chart. This shows the different types of fuel and purchase power that go into our fuel and purchase power plan. So these are represented as billions of dollars in the stack bar. Each stack represented a different type of fuel with the brown at the bottom being coal, moving up to nuclear, purchase power, wind and solar, and then gas at the top. You can see that we started out, this shows 2011, we were roughly $4.4 $4 billion worth of spending. In 2016, this plan includes $3.4 billion worth of spending. So over that period, that's a reduction of about a billion dollars of fuel purchase power. The blue line that's inlaid shows what our overall generation is during that period. And you can see we have had a reduction in generation, some because of the impacts of the economy, some because of the impacts of energy efficiency competing as a resource. Uh, and so overall, I would tell you that of that billion dollar reduction, about half of it was related simply to reduces reductions in volume as well as just pure price reduction predominantly in natural gas and about 500 million of that or half of it is a direct result of productivity improvements in our operating fleet and taking advantage of the diverse portfolio and so you can see 500 million dollars worth of positive benefit there if you look going forward you can see while we are projecting low growth and increases in generation uh, superimposed the actual fuel rate at the bottom of this chart and one of the things that we're happy for is that you can see the overall fuel rate stays flat even though commodity prices and volumes go up and that's a direct result of changes in the fleet if you look at the green bars they get slightly bigger the benefit of watts bar 2 coming online providing lower cost of fuel one other item I highlight is there's quite a bit of discussion today about renewables and you heard from the speakers this plan includes over $530 million, you can see the yellow bar of commitment to renewable resources. That's actually an increase of $60 million from what we saw in 2015. I mentioned I would talk about energy efficiency and the impacts of energy efficiency specifically in this plan relative to being treated as a resource. And you can see at the top of this chart on the left side, it shows the actual megawatts. So what helps us in terms of meeting our peak load the right side you can see the energy component of this and we've invested uh, if you look over this planning period about a billion dollars in energy efficiency and it will contribute to an 800 megawatt essentially uh, the, uh, the size of the new combined cycle gas plant in terms of demand reduction at the bottom you can see the financial commitment this plan includes 104 million dollars of kind of pure energy efficiency demand response programs and you can see that grows anticipated to grow over this period and in $70 million of impact of uh, interruptible pricing. And you heard from some of the customers today about the interruptible programs and, uh, and we utilize those and those contribute roughly another 1,200 megawatts of demand response. The 3.7 billion is our total o and &M. That includes some items that are really more driven by uh, accounting standards than a real operational spending. If you look at the period from 2013's budget to the 2015 budget, you can see the $3 billion going down to $2.5 billion, and that's the anchor for the $500 million reduction. Our aggregate o &M, you can see, dropped by $700 million. Again, that incremental $200 million is primarily accounting changes. If you look in terms of, sorry to talk about thanks. If you look going from our 2015 budget, that achieves the $500 million reduction to our 2016 plan, which we hope will become the budget, you can see roughly a $100 million reduction. But I want to explain that in more detail because there's no movement parts underneath the OEM that I need to explain. So the next chart begins with the three roughly rounded $3 billion 15 budget. And then we anticipate that we will have uh, wage increases for the current staff that we have that would equate to roughly $76 million of incremental spending. 
We also will have two new operating units that will have staff that will result in $67 million worth of incremental spending. Uh, we have some incremental dam safety work that we're doing. That's $23 million. We do see the impacts of beginning cold plant closures in terms of reducing expenditures by $8 million. We had some severance expense in the 2015 budget that will not be uh, recurring in 2016. That's $50 million. So you take all that into account and say, what is it going to take for us to get to the $2.9 billion in our plan? We have to generate $178 million worth of productivity and efficiency efforts in order to be able to achieve that plan. So you'll hear us talk about $178 million of productivity, and I wanted everybody to understand how that flows through our financial results. There's an incremental $200 million that's planned if you were to look out into the 2017 budget as well. So the ongoing efficiency and productivity efforts are not done with the $500 million. There's still much more work to be done on a continuous